Are you making a game with Unity's data-oriented technology stack and using either a first or third person character controller? Or maybe you have a need to move some enemies around in a 3D space? If so, then you should definitely look into Rival, the DOTS character controller developed by the same person who created the excellent kinematic character controller asset. Rival essentially gives you everything that you need to create a base character controller with Unity Dots, and then you can add your own features on top of that. So today I'm gonna to be doing a little overview of this character controller to give you some ideas of the features and capabilities of it. Basically, you're just going to be going through some of the sample scenes, and at the end, I'm gonna be doing a stress test to see how many um, character controller entities my computer can handle at a time. So right now, down in the comment section below, let me know how many character controllers you think my computer can handle before it completely melts. So much like the kinematic character controller, the Rival Dots character controller is available on Unity's asset store. Of course, we'll leave some links down in the description so you can go check that out. And do let me know if you are interested in learning a little bit more about the rival character controller and you want to maybe uh, see some how-to videos and things like that. I think the documentation that it comes with is pretty good, um, but I know some people are a little bit more visual learners, so definitely let me know if you would be interested in seeing some more videos about the rival character controller. And of course, if you did enjoy today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system. Of course, if you do have any questions for me, feel free to leave those down in the comments section below or come join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. All right, so here we are in one of the sample scenes. This is the platformer sample scene. So you can basically see that we have this nice little world for us to play around in. Um, right now, I'm just kind of using the mouse to move the camera. And we, of course, you can use the scroll wheel to kind of zoom out. We can zoom out pretty far and uh, we can scroll in and we can all even scroll all the way into like a first person view so we can start moving around in a little first person view here um, but i'll just stay at this kind of nice third person view here for the duration of this um, little showcase here so anyways of course we can use the w a s and d keys to uh, move our character around just as we would expect to um, as you might expect space is jump we can in fact do a double jump um, in the character controller, you can actually define how many times you can jump before um, it basically stops letting you jump. Um, so right now it's just set to kind of like a double jump here. Another thing that you can do is we can actually hold down the shift key and kind of sprint around. Um, you know, you get this little nice animation of the guy throwing his hands up. So I think that's sort of funny there. Um, another one that we can do is we can press C, which kind of toggles a crouch motion. So you start going a little slower and you're kind of in like a, a crouch state. So again, we can just kind of switch back and forth between these here. Um, and then one kind of fun one that they added in to this little sample scene is if you actually hold down the control key, you turn into like this little marble and you can kind of just like go just roam around the stage like this. So I think the, this is just like kind of a fun one to play around with. Um, I thought it was kind of cool. It's like um, almost like a little Metroid. You, you turn into a, a ball and you can just roll around here like that and just pop out. Now, one of the things that I particularly like about this demo scene is it like literally just shows you how you can make essentially make like a Ratchet and Clank game. There's like, you know, everything that you would want. Of course, we have these kind of sticky surfaces which allow you to walk on walls. So it's exactly like having the uh, magnet boots in Ratchet and Clank here. Um, so we can just kind of like run around this and, um, you know, if we fall off then, oh, Oh, cool, I'm climbing on the side, that's funny. Oh, I didn't know you could do that, that's cool. Um, we also have climbable surfaces, so we can actually run up to this, it's not doing anything, but if we press the F key, we'll go into a climbing state, and then you can see we can like, you know, climb up and down and around and like come across this little bridge thing here. Now, another important part of these character controllers is you want to basically be able to kind of like stick to the platform um, that you're on so it basically it takes care of all like the crazy parenting and stuff that needs to take place for you to essentially just like stay put on this platform here um, and you can see that we can just like pretty much walk around this platform just as we would expect to now here's kind of a cool thing that they added in we can jump into the water here and then we start going into a swimming state so as you can see we're kind of just swimming around now of course we can swim up and swim down um, I think it's kind of funny when you go to the surface um, and you continue swimming up, it kind of looks like he's drowning a little bit. So um, that's just kind of how the, all the animations are set up. But then um, we can jump out of the water like that and keep moving on. I think uh, this is a cool thing coming up here. We can actually teleport to a planet, which is right up there. 
So we'll go here and you'll see that there are, it has planetational gravity set. So uh, much like the platforms that we were kind of sticking to them, we're sticking to this planet here as it's um, kind of orbiting around. We're just staying right in place as we would expect to. And of course we can walk all the way around. We're on the other underside of the planet. We can still jump around and the gravity is bringing us right to uh, the planet here. So of course we can just kind of um, walk around. There's kind of some like little cube things sticking out of here and we can, you know, of course just like walk up and down these as we would expect to. And you know, all this stuff is just, you know, it, it just like works. <laughs> That's uh, you know, the, the biggest compliment that I can give it is everything just works as you would expect to. Um, so we can come back to the ground here. And here's another thing that is like, you know, totally exactly like Ratchet and Clank. Um, so we have the rope anchor right here. So we can kind of come on top of these boxes. I overshot the jump, but that's okay. Um, and then if we press the Q key, we can jump off of here. And now we're basically um, kind of doing the, the, sl the swing shot thing. And then we can just jump off of there. And um, see, they also have a jump pad. So we can just fly out of here. So, I mean, everything that you would want in a nice platforming game, I mean, this makes me literally just want to make the Dots version of Ratchet and Clank right now because, you know, that game is awesome. All right, so now then, here's another sample scene. This one's just kind of more of a kind of like generic testing scene. It has these different type of objects that we can test around with. As you see, they're colored differently depending on what we need. Um, and then, you know, there's all different types of moving platforms and different speeds and everything. Um, we can see what happens if we say jump on this platform and then run into this this wall. So there's just like, you know, all sorts of crazy weird edge cases that we can test with, kind of see how everything reacts. As you can see um, in the upper right hand corner, I mean, my FPS is great. I'm getting around like 245, 230 uh, frames per second. Um, while well, well, all this stuff is going on. So that is um, nice to see. I'm not gonna play around in here too much, but as you can see, it um, even has like a little vehicle controller so we can drive the vehicle around the course, kind of see how the vehicle reacts to all these different platforms and uh, going over different slopes of all these like obstacles and everything like that. And again, this is just kind of like a good testing environment so you can like, you know, test all these edge cases to see how your character controller reacts to all different kinds of surfaces and, and you know, what happens if you go down into this little like wedge thing here. Do you just get stuck or can is there a way that you can actually um, like clip through the surfaces? So this is just like a really good testing scene for you to mess around with your character controller and just kind of see how it reacts to different surfaces that may or may not appear in your game. All right, and then finally, we have the stress test scene. So right now, I'm just running this in the Unity editor. But as you can see, right now with nothing, we're getting around 400 frames per second. And so let's see how many entities my computer can handle here. Again, if you haven't done so already, leave your guess down below. How many entities do you think my computer can handle? before it starts melting, or at least goes under uh, a frame rate of 60 frames per second. Um, so we'll turn on the terrain mesh here just to make it a little bit more interesting. We'll start with 500 entities. So we'll go ahead and spawn these. You see that um, we have basically 500 of these character controllers just kind of circling around up here. Um, and as you can see, my frame rate dipped way down already. We're now at about um, 100, 150, 160 is kind of the the average here. Um, so let's go ahead and let's bump this up to say 1500. All right, so with 1500 entities moving around, we're still kind of around the uh, 150, 160 average. Okay, it looks like it's coming down a little bit, but yeah, right around 150. So I think we can kind of bump this up a little bit more. So let's go up to say 500 or 5000, excuse me. So now we have uh, 5,000 of these little character controllers just roaming around in our game world. So you can still, as you can see, I'm still, you know, up above 120 frames per second with 5,000 of these guys running around in the world. Um, they're all, you know, calculating physics and everything like that. So that's that's really cool to see. Let's go ahead and double this. We'll go up to 10,000. All right, we'll spawn these in. You'll see that we have a massive now field of all these entities going around still, you know, quite healthily above 100 frames per second with 10,000 of these entities. See what happens when we get all the way up to 20,000 entities. We'll go ahead and spawn this here. 
All right, with 20,000 entities, still getting around 70 frames per second. I mean, with 20,000 entities on this, this massive terrain mesh here, um, you know, just barely dipped below 70 frames per second. That's awesome. All right, let's see, 25,000. So it looks like uh, 25,000, the average is just right around that 60 frames per second mark. So I feel like 25,000 is pretty much kind of the limit of what I would want to have um, to be right around that 60 frames per second target. But now let's just go crazy with this. Let's let's double this. Let's go up to 50,000. Let's see what happens here. So with 50,000 entities, you know, we got entities and character controllers as far as the eye can see. Still getting around 30 frames per second. I think 30 frames per second is pretty much the minimum acceptable um, basically target that we would want to be at. Again, by the way, this is on a 4K monitor, so just keep that in mind. So this is uh, 4K, 30 frames per second. That's pretty good. All right, let's actually try to melt my computer. 100,000 uh, character controllers in here. Okay, um, around 18 frames per second average. So we can definitely notice kind of some stuttering going on here. Um, again, this is running in the editor. It's not on a build on my computer. And I have a couple other programs running as well. So 17 frames per second. I mean, this is certainly below an acceptable range, but it's not like chugging along. So I think the next logical one, 250,000, we're gonna do a quarter of a million entities. You know, I'm really just trying to melt this thing now. Okay, 10 frames per second. I don't know if um, this might be less than actually 10 frames per second because it looks like it's just kind of stuck at the bottom here. So it, it might not actually be calculating anything below 10 frames per second. Um, and we are starting to get some errors down on the console here. Let's see what happens. Can we crash Unity? If I do 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million character controllers. Let's see what happens. Okay, Unity is frozen. Please spawn, please spawn, please spawn, please spawn. Oh my gosh, it spawned. <laughs> All right, this is like one frame per second right now. <laughs> but I mean, let's be real. It's still working. We have one million character controllers in my scene. I mean, we are going about one frame per second. But um, I mean, it's still calculating all of them. And so this is what 16 cores, 32 logical threads looks like being maxed out in the task manager right now. Um, again, we're calculating 1 million entities, 1 million character controllers um, in just a massive field of them. Again, about one frame per second, 100% CPU utilization on my 16 core, 32 thread beast of a processor plenty of available memory though and gpu doesn't look like it's working too hard either just sitting around a uh, 50 percent utilization here so overall not too bad i think my computer handled this test quite well so anyways that's gonna wrap up today's video i really hope you enjoyed it just kind of a cool fun little look at the rival character controller again do let me know if you'd like to see more videos on the rival character controller um, this little fun experiment video was fun to make here. Um, so I do want to kind of dive into this character controller a little bit more, maybe experiment with creating my own custom character controllers, kind of adding some cool functionality to it. Of course, making a game much like Ratchet and Clank, because um, again, that's one of my favorite games of all time. But let me know if there is a kind of game, maybe a platformer that you would like to make with this character controller, something like uh, Mario or you know whatever else that you might enjoy. What are your favorite platformers? Um, things that inspire you to make the games that you make today. So anyways, I'm gonna wrap up today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, I really appreciate it. If you hit that like button, also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, uh, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. Again, over or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.